multitudes in his form. But he continued to teach his disciples in a plain manner. But crowds primarily got parables. A common misunderstanding is that a parable was given so that all people could easily understand. But upon further study, this may not be the case. Although parables were more relatable because they were stories about real life situations, they often had hidden meanings with further explanation. These hidden meanings challenge a sincerely interested future inquiry and taught truths that Jesus concealed from various groups. These parables taught us about the sovereignty of God, the responsibility of man, and the grace of the gospel. But this parable right now, the strange sheep, in this passage, Jesus is telling that this parable to his disciples, this is similar to the parable of the lost sheep told in Luke 15. But there is a noticeable difference, however, in Jesus' audience and the words used in each parable. Based off some commentary, commentaries of this passage, and more fitting title for this passage is a straying sheep. For those following Christ, however, it is not our role to determine whether a person is a true follower as only God can know the heart. It's not our responsibility to say if he or she is not real. It's our responsibility to try not to go astray and stay along with the sheep so we can be directed by the shepherd. It is our role to come and pursue after those who are not following Christ that need to repent and be reconciled to God for his glory. Looking at this passage, these scriptures say something to me. And as I look at it, I have four quick points. Four quick points. And I'm going to make them and I'll be through. I, I want to start with my first point. We have a good shepherd. We, 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 we have a good shepherd. We have a shepherd that takes care of us. See, in verse 11, it says, For the Son of Man is come to save that which was lost. Well, well what is it saying? He comes to save the lost. And we were lost in our sins and going to hell and was liking the ride on the way there. We were in our sin. But we have a good shepherd. A good shepherd that will save you. The, our shepherd is so good that you can be around a lot of believers and you can stray away and the shepherd will lead the other believers and go see just about you. We have a good shepherd. See, he'll come see about you when you stray away. When you're in trouble, the good shepherd will come get you. See, sometimes when you're in certain trouble, man can't get you out of that trouble. I hope somebody heard me this morning. It's certain trouble that your friend and your brother cannot come get you out of. It takes the shepherd only to come get his sheep out of that situation when he or she starts to stray because it's some places that other sheep can't go anyway. Because another sheep will go in there and get caught up with you as well. Because sheep are dumb. They can see another sheep fall off the ledge and they'll keep on walking and they will fall as well. But, but my first point was we have a good shepherd. But what gets me to my second point, not only do we have a good shepherd, my second point is he shows that he cares. See, see, a, a, a lot of times people say, I love you. Many times people say, when you're there, when you need me, just call me and I'll be there. 
Many people say, whatever you need, I'm there for you. But all those three things I said, man will say that and won't do that. But God always cares for us and he will be there when you need him at all times. See, he cares and he shows that he cares for everyone. See, that will come and to do something for you, the person that goes through things and never ever see an act of kindness. But the Lord and the Good Shepherd always shows an act of kindness because he has blessed you with something in your life that you know you didn't even deserve to get. He shows that he cares. Act of kindness is showing that he cares. If we have a good shepherd and the good shepherd is good to us, us as sheep, we should treat other sheep just like the shepherd treats us. If he shows that he cares about us, us as sheep should care about other sheep because the shepherd cares about sheep and us as sheep should care for one another. Some of us go through ups and downs, but the shepherd shows you he cares. Once in our life, when serving the Lord is not top priority, that's when you can easily go astray. But, but, but God has a personal interest in your life, so for God to have a personal interest in your life, you yourself need to have a personal interest in God because he loves you so much in return you should show him love back. We were out of control and God came and controlled us. We were going too fast and God came and slowed us down. Some of us were moving too slow and God came and had to speed us up. I, 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 God's personal interest in your life. The Lord is always with you even when you go astray. It's been times in my life that man couldn't get me out of my predicament. And it was the Lord and the Lord only. And not only was it the Lord and the Lord only, I knew that it was the Lord and the Lord only. I don't know who I'm talking to this morning, but somebody saved and sanctified now. But they can remember when they didn't even think about reading the Bible. They can remember when they weren't even thinking about listening to a preacher. They can remember when they weren't even thinking about going to church. But look at us now. The shepherd had to come and get us out of our situation when we went astray. He showed that he cared. My third point, God is the great shepherd of his sheep. Let me tell you what I mean. Some people think they are shepherd, but don't have any sheep. All right. God is the great shepherd of his sheep. Which meaning God is in control of your life. And you know we all are sheep. And if anybody sits behind this sacred desk, he is a under shepherd. And God is the head of the church. So God is the great shepherd of his sheep. What are you saying? We should listen to God and God only when it's concerning spiritual matters. Yeah, we can get advice from man or woman, but that is God speaking through that man or woman, and we have to know the difference. Doth he not? I'm in verse 12. Doth he not leave the 99? Can't can, let me just talk to y'all. Can you imagine a hundred sheep and one go astray and God leaves those 99. He goes and get that one but he rejoices more on the one that came back versus the 99 
that didn't go astray. Let me tell you what I mean. In NIV it says he will not leave the 99. What does that mean? No, it says will he not leave the 99. What that means, the 99 are sheep together. Now he goes and gets this one. The 99 never went astray. It was the one that went astray. So he is happy when he gets the one versus the 99 because the 99 didn't go astray. And that one that went astray, he is rejoicing because he went and got that one out of those mountains. You know those mountains where we like to hide and think nobody know where we are and Somebody asks you what's your name and you give them your old name, you don't go by no more. You know, he had to come get you out of those mountains. And let me tell you what that was. The one sheep was with the other. And the one sheep went and hid in the mountains, which means he knew what to do, but he wanted to go astray on his own accord. We like that church. We know right from wrong, but sometimes we just want to do our own thing regardless of what's right or wrong. We want to go hide in that mount. And like you think you hide, and everybody know where your hiding spots are. Because when you weren't hiding and you was right, you told people what you used to do. And then when you go astray, you don't think they know where you are. You just told them what you used to do. So you're going to revert and go back to that. You can't hide in no mountain. They know where your mountain is. So you might as well not go astray in the first place. The Lord is a good shepherd. He takes care of his sheep. He will go into the mountains after you if you go astray. He has to go into the mountains if you go astray because the Lord is our protector. You have to know as sheep, the shepherd is there. God has a personal interest in your life. So when you talk about the Lord, you are, it ought to be personal from what he done for you. You, you ought to know the Lord in the pardon of your sins and you have to get to know him yourself for you to tell anybody how good he has been to you. The only way you get to know him you have to have a personal relationship with him. And once you have a personal relationship with him, you don't have to worry about what nobody else thinks because you can call on him in such a way that he lets you know how you feel about him. This, this is what David said. The day David said, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want he maketh me lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still water. He restored my soul. So what David was saying was, the Lord is my shepherd, and this thing is personal with me. David met a lot of people. David saved a lot of people. But David could not say, the Lord is our shepherd. It has to be personal with you. You have to know what the Lord has done for you. And you have to know that we all have strayed. But let me reiterate this and make it my last point. And I'm in my seat. A good shepherd seeks the straying one. So, 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 so let me say, you might think that, oh, I'm the only one that messed up. Oh, I'm the only one that backslid in life. You might say, oh, I think I'm the only one that messed up so bad that God won't forgive me. I left all the other sheep and I strayed away. But we have a good shepherd yeah, yeah. All right. that seeks 
the strand one. So if you think you're the only one going through, God will leave 99 and come see about you. If you think you're the only one, God looks out for the only. The Bible tells me that Lazarus was Mary and Martha's only brother. The Bible tells me that the widow woman that was her only son and Jairus' daughter that was his only daughter. But did the Lord take care of them in their only situation? Don't worry right. if you are the only one for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Didn't I tell you the Lord will come and see about you. All right. If you think you the only one don't worry about it. God take care of of the only because when he sit on that cross between those two corners he was the only one that was sinless so that Friday they nailed him to the cross and they laid him in a bottle of tomb I used to have a problem about that bottle of tomb God, with all this majesty, all this royalty, laying in somebody else's tomb. But think about it. He wasn't going to stay there that long. Because early that Sunday morning, he got up with all power, healing power, saving power. God will come and see about you. God has a personal interest in your life. God cares about if you stray away, he'll come see about you. No matter what your situation is, he'll come and sit and he'll sup with you. Ain't the Lord all right? Won't he come in your own situation? Won't he come in and see about you? Won't he make a way out of nowhere in your life? Won't he be the all in all? Is there anybody that can say, thank you, Lord, for taking a personal interest in my life? Is there anybody? Instead of telling the man, no, I want to stay in this mountain. The Lord will come get you and bring you back in the fold. And put your name in the Lamb's book of life. Amen. The doors of the church stand open. Thank you, Lord, for taking a personal interest in our life. might be one today that just sit back and realize God you've been there for me all the time Lord you thought I was worth saving when, when nobody else thought nothing about me Lord you was right there protecting me guiding me Thank you. 
Thank you, Lord. shut in for our bereaved families and for the entire church family as a whole. Amen. If we have no further announcements, we can be dismissed. Most gracious and heavenly Father, we ask as we leave this building, we never leave your blessings. Lord, we ask as we leave this place, we're always in your presence. Now to him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before his presence of glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God and Savior be glory and majesty, dominion and power. And we all say amen together. Amen. It was. I just stopped it.